Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe how homogenization and cell fractionation can be used to separate cell organelles. Now, cells contain a number of different organelles, including mitochondria, lysosomes, ribosomes, and the nucleus. And in later videos, we'll look at the functions of all the organelles. In this video, we're going to look at a really important technique that allows scientists to study the functions of organelles. This is called cell fractionation. In the first stage, we take a sample of tissue containing the cells that we're interested in, for example, heart muscle tissue. Next, we homogenize the tissue. Homogenize means to break up the tissue and break open the cells. Now we can do this in a blender, or we can use a homogenizer like this. A homogenizer is a glass tube containing a plunger. We place our tissue sample into the glass tube, and we cover this with a buffer solution. Buffers keep the pH constant. Now, this is important because if the pH changes, enzymes in the cell's organelles could denature. The water potential of the buffer is the same as inside the cell. This prevents water from moving into the organelles by osmosis and causing them to burst. The homogenizer is then placed on ice. Cooling the sample means that enzymes work more slowly, preventing any destructive enzymes from damaging the organelles. Now we push the plunger up and down to disrupt the tissue and break open the cells. This produces a cell homogenate. The cell homogenate contains all the organelles that we find in the cell. Now, in order to find out what these organelles do, we need to separate them. And in order to understand this, we need to look at the relative sizes of the different organelles. The largest organelle is the nucleus, followed by the mitochondria. Lysosomes are smaller, and ribosomes are very small indeed. Now, I should point out that the endoplasmic reticulum is a very large organelle, but this tends to get broken up during homogenization, so we're not going to consider this. Separating out all of the different organelles is called fractionation, and we carry this out using a machine called a centrifuge. I'm showing you a picture of a centrifuge here. We place our tubes containing the cell homogenate into the sample holder. So here are our sample tubes containing the cell homogenate. The centrifuge now spins the sample, and the organelles are flung towards the bottom of the tube by the forces generated. Larger organelles, such as the nucleus, experience a greater force and move towards the bottom of the tube faster than smaller organelles. First, we start with a relatively low speed spin. At the end of the spin, the tube looks like this. As we said, as the centrifuge spins, the larger organelles, such as the nuclei, are flung to the bottom of the tube, forming a pellet. The remaining organelles stay suspended in the liquid, and we call this liquid the supernatant. We now transfer the supernatant into a new tube, and centrifuge this at a higher speed. After the higher speed spin, the pellet now contains mitochondria. Once again, we transfer the supernatant to a new tube, and centrifuge again at a higher speed. This time, the pellet contains lysosomes. Finally, we take the supernatant one more time and transfer this to another tube for a final, very high speed spin. Now, the pellet contains ribosomes. So, as you can see, we've separated all the organelles by size. At this point, we can test each fraction to determine how the organelles work. Now, there are a couple of final points I want to make. First, we need to keep the pellets on ice until we use them. Again, this is to slow down enzymes which might damage the organelles. Secondly, it's extremely difficult to separate the organelles fully. So, for example, the mitochondrial fraction might contain a very small number of nuclei and lysosomes. Also, there are other organelles such as the endoplasmic reticulum and Golgi apparatus, which might be present in your fractions. Okay, so hopefully now you can describe homogenization and cell fractionation. 